Today we're going to be talking about animal communication, how it works, is it real, what you can do with it, and if you can talk to animals on the other side with it. Hi, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I am an animal communicator. That means pet psychic. That means that for my job, I connect with animals. <laughs> Did you hear that? There's my animal. <laughs> There she is. That means I connect with animals psychically every day. We're going to start out by talking about is animal communication real? Then I'm going to share with you how it works. And then I'm going to share with you what you can use it for. Can you connect with animals that have crossed over, for example? So let's start with is this real? <laughs> First of all, all animals are innately psychic. They connect with one another intuitively, and they connect with their environment, their world intuitively. They connect in this way in order to survive. Um, you've heard about elephants that can sense their counterparts 500 miles away. You've heard about dogs who seem to know when their human is coming home. All of these things are examples of animals using their intuition. Now, animals need their intuition basically in order to live. This is how they survive. We also have intuition like the animals do, but by the time we're about five years old, we tend to turn it off. <laughs> Our culture says, no, don't listen to that. You're a crazy person, don't do it. But it's there. Basically, what animal communication is, the way I'm talking about it, is I connect to animals intuitively to receive information from the animal that the animal wants me to have. Animals can send me information through visuals, through sounds, through feelings and emotions, and through knowing, where suddenly I just know the information. So the way it works is I set myself in a type of um, emotional and energetic state, <laughs> because she's getting into it. So I set myself up into an emotional and energetic state that is receptive and kind and gentle so that I can communicate with the animal. And by doing that, by sending my energy to the animal and setting my intention and working with the animal in the way that I basically that I teach people to work, that animal goes, okay, hey, Danielle, hi, I'm ready to talk. I'd like to connect. Now, I can ask that animal questions and the animal can give me answers if the animal chooses to give me answers. So now we're gonna talk about what you can do with animal communication because um, a lot of people think that you can use animal communication one way and you can't. A lot of people think, hey, I want to learn animal communication or I want to go to an animal communicator because my cat is not using the litter box and I want her to use the litter box. She needs to start using the litter box and so Danielle, you connect with my cat and you tell her to use the litter box. I used to think that animal communication worked that way, <laughs> but it really doesn't. And I actually wrote my whole book, my animal lessons book, my whole book is about this, this idea, which is that the animal is their own being and they have access to really beautiful, big picture spiritual information that we as humans do not consciously have access to. I can't use animal communication as a way of controlling the animal. It doesn't work that way. When I've connected, early on in my career, when I first started doing this, and I would try to tell animals what to do, I was basically getting the no <laughs> from the animals. Because they're like, you can't connect with me psychically and control me. I don't have to listen to that. I, am, I have free will. I don't have to do it. When I opened up more deeply in my connections with animals, though, what I found out is that the animals were willing to make changes when the humans connected to those animals grew, evolved, and made changes themselves. So the really anxious, nervous, worried dog, for example, would say, well, I will chill out and the things that my human's doing to try and make me more comfortable, I will start being more comfortable with those. When my human starts taking care of herself and works on her own anxiety problems, while we think animal communication is going to be the thing that controls the animal, what it actually does is it helps us become our better selves. Because when we listen to what the animals are saying to us about ourselves, we are given an opportunity to actually grow and evolve and in turn help the animals in our lives. Now, can you use animal communication to connect with animals that have crossed over? 
And the answer is yes. And it's a really cool thing that you can do that. In fact, when I'm teaching people animal communication, and a lot of the people I teach are people who are um, missing their pet on the other side. And that's why they want to learn animal communication, because they want to be able to connect to, talk with, have a relationship with their pet that has crossed over. So you absolutely can do this. And the coolest thing is a lot of the time, the animal that has crossed over now is like, hey, you can talk to me. You can connect with me. This is really cool. And they start telling you things about your life, about yourself that they've noticed from the other side. So it actually, you end up feeling even more connected to one another simply because they are able to share all this information where you thought they weren't around. So learning animal communication is a great way to better yourself. It's also a great way to establish a relationship with your pet on the other side.